Hello Accounting 101 students. In this video, we will go over some of the major areas of focus in Chapter 6. And in Chapter 6, we have a lot of topics that relate to determining the value of a company's inventory on the balance sheet. And you do need to spend some time going through all of these student review slides in addition to reading the textbook in detail and practicing utilizing all of the resources we have in our Canvas modules area. One of the major topics is determining the ownership of inventory. Then we also want to be able to calculate the cost of goods sold, especially if a company is using a periodic inventory system. And then one of the other major topics is valuing inventory using FIFO, first in, first out, LIFO, last in, first out, and weighted average costing under a periodic inventory system. And then you wanna be able to value inventory using these different methods if you are using a perpetual inventory system. From this, you should be able to compare these inventory valuation methods. And then you also want to read our textbook and the student review slides for some other topics relating to inventory, including valuating inventory at the lower of cost or market, inventory turnover, which relates to the ratios that we're computing for, for inventory, as well as correcting inventory errors. So physical inventory is taken for two reasons when you have a perpetual inventory system. With a perpetual inventory system, you have a detailed inventory record, and every time inventory is purchased, it is being recorded. Every time inventory is sold, your inventory records are updated. So you should have a accurate listing of inventory records, but you also want to determine if any inventory was lost due to waste, shoplifting, or employee theft. And then, um, you also want to realize that inventory is um, counted under a periodic system for two reasons. With the periodic system, you do not have detailed inventory records. So you need to complete a inventory count at the end of each period to determine the amount of inventory on hand and value that inventory. And also you want to take your physical inventory to determine the cost of goods sold for the period. When we're determining the ownership of goods, we have to consider that there could be some goods that are in transit. So those are goods that are purchased but not yet received. And then a company might have sold goods but are not yet delivered. And the terms of the sale um, indicate the legal title, which company has legal title to the goods. And that relates to the topic of FOB shipping point, which is when the buyer pays the freight cost, and FOB destination, where the seller pays freight cost. So with FOB shipping point, ownership of the goods passes to the buyer when the public carrier um, so the shipping company accepts the goods from the seller, okay? And that's gonna be different from FOB destination. The ownership of the goods remains with the seller until the goods reach the buyer. So one way I kind of like to think about ownership of goods is um, ordering pizza, okay? If you order pizza for pickup, the pizza restaurant is responsible for having that item available at the pickup counter. And you're going to arrange the transportation to pick up the pizza. And as soon as you pick up the pizza at the location of the pizza place, um, it becomes your pizza. That's gonna be different from FOB destination. I like to think of this as pizza delivery. You might pay a higher cost, right? Um, in order to get that pizza delivered to you, but the ownership passes 
when the pizza actually gets delivered at its destination. So the seller is going to arrange for the transportation of the goods until it reaches to the buyer. Um, so essentially the seller is arranging for those freight costs. So um, one thing that you wanna keep in mind is that freight costs incurred by the seller are operating expenses. Another topic with determining the ownership of goods is consigned goods. So that's when a company is going to hold the goods of other parties and try to sell the goods on their behalf without taking ownership. So there are some rules of ownership that you want to um, review with some of these problems within our student review slides. And then the next major topic is determining the inventory and cost of goods sold in the financial statements, the formula for determining cost of goods sold, and the inventory valuation methods. So inventory is reported as an asset on the balance sheet, and the cost of goods sold is reported on the income statement. And when you have a periodic inventory system, you have to determine the ending inventory by doing that physical inventory count in order to compute the cost of goods sold. So the cost of goods sold formula starts off with the beginning inventory at the beginning of a period. You're gonna add inventory purchases that were made during that period, and that will give you the cost of goods available for sale. Then the company does its physical inventory count, which is going to be the ending inventory, so if you take the cost of goods available for sale, subtract out your ending inventory, then you will arrive at the cost of goods sold. And there are three inventory valuation methods that we focus on in this chapter. There's actually a fourth method, which is the specific identification method that you can read about. Um, but in terms of application, you want to be able to determine the cost of goods sold and determine the value of ending inventory under each of these three methods. And I do recommend that you utilize all of the different resources that we have um, in this class, especially those demonstration videos that will go over the detail of these three inventory valuation methods. First in, first out. So the first inventory you receive is the first inventory that you would be selling to your customers. And this is especially useful when you have inventory that's going to spoil or get damaged or become obsolete. Um, and generally, most companies will want to use first in, first out because they don't want their old inventory sitting in a store or a warehouse. Then we have last in, first out. So you just received inventory and you're gonna sell it right away. And this is not used by many businesses, but there are some specialized industries where LIFO would make sense. And then we have weighted average. You kind of um, don't have a clear um, segregation between your new inventory and your old inventory. And you're really looking at the average cost. And that's especially helpful when you have commodities. So if you were a bakery, you would try to use up your old flour first, but at some point you're gonna replenish your bin of flours and the price will fluctuate um, a little bit from period to period, but it's helpful to um, look at the average cost so that way you do your analysis of what's your cost of inventory. Um, you'll have a good idea of the average cost. So please take some time to watch the videos that we have and all of the practice resources that we have. Um, one of the things that you want to um, keep in mind is that based on the method, there could be some effects on the balance sheet and the income statement, especially in periods of changing prices. So when there is a period of inflation, so when prices are increasing, the first in first out method is going to give you a higher net income because the lower unit cost for the first unit purchase are gonna be matched against revenue. So in periods of inflation, you bought inventory for a low cost, 
a long, long time ago, and you're selling that first, and so your cost of goods sold would have been lower, which gives you a higher net income, okay? And the opposite will hold true for LIFO, and weighted average is always gonna be in the middle. Another major topic that we have is inventory and how it is um, presented on the balance sheet. So inventory is always classified as a current asset. And in the multi-step income statement, the cost of goods sold is subtracted from net sales. So a company would also disclose their major inventory classification um, and then their basis of accounting and also the cost method. So this is where they'll talk about in the footnotes to the financial statements, whether they use FIFO, LIFO, or average cost. Lower of cost or market um, refers to how we value that inventory. And after the company uses one of the cost flow methods, companies may need to write down their inventory to the market prices or the market value if a price decline occurs, okay? So companies need to be conservative on their balance sheet to ensure that their balance sheet is not overstated in case if they paid extra money um, to acquire their inventory. The inventory should be listed at the lower of the cost paid for that inventory or the current market price. Um, when it comes to analysis of inventory, um, companies really need to look at their inventory management. And one of the things that they consider is the inventory turnover ratio, which takes the cost of goods sold and dividing that by the average inventory. The average inventory for a period is the beginning inventory plus the ending inventory, add them together, divide by two. Um, for the purposes of this class. And then a company also wants to consider how many days has inventory been sitting in their store or in their warehouse, okay? So to compute the days in inventory, we take 365 days in a year and divide that by that inventory turnover ratio. So some companies will have 30 days for their inventory, and that's you know a pretty good turnover, um, but it varies based on industry. Sometimes a company might have um, four months where inventory is sitting, and that might be normal for their industry. And that's really important um, for companies to look at their inventory turnover ratio and their days in inventory from one period to another period, but also compared to their industry average. Um, another major topic is that companies get the opportunity to choose their inventory valuation method. So for providing transparency to the readers of financial statements, if a company chose LIFO compared to choosing FIFO, which is a lot more common for companies to use FIFO, the reader should be informed of what would be the dollar difference if the inventory was reported using LIFO compared to FIFO. So it's just looking at the dollar difference. And this is referred to as the LIFO reserve. And then we also want to look at inventory errors. Okay, so when a company makes a error in their inventory, they need to determine the impact on the cost of goods sold and the impact on the net income in the current period and the prior period. So please take some time, especially to read through the income statement effects um, and the balance sheet effects when a company has errors in their beginning inventory or in their ending inventory. And this is a really good area to meet with an accounting tutor to go over in detail, um, especially for chapter six. And also for chapter six, you really wanna spend a lot of time practice, practice, practice um, to practice all of the concepts, especially the application of FIFO, LIFO, and weighted average. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video.
Happy studying.